What is your middle name? My middle name is Lawrence. Um, how many brothers and sisters do I have? I have a younger brother and an older sister. When and who did you get married to? I got married August 20th. A uh, gal named Sarah from South Calgary. What is your parents' business? Do they provide rough stock for rodeos? Um, no, no rough stock for rodeos, just ranchers. Um, cattle buyers, and we used to train and sell horses, so that's what we used to do. Wayne Volt, so it'd be a third third cousin. Um, and then his dad, Harry, who lives in Colorado. They do, they're the big time, probably like one of the founders, I guess, really, in pro rodeo for stock contracting. So yeah, they go way back. Yeah. Like Harry, Harry's been to every NFR that's ever gone on from Oklahoma City and on, so. Well, there's a lot of years. I think he's 90, 91, I think, Harry. Um, when did you know you wanted to come ride Bronx or to start riding Bronx? And what was the light bulb moment? <laughs> um, I always knew I wanted to ride bucking horses. That's my dad rode bareback horses and my uh, my grandpa rode Bronx. So started out at 15. I was finished riding steers at 14 and uh, started riding Bronx right at 15. Um, did that all through high school until I was in grade 12. And then I started riding bareback horses. Um, worked five events, I guess, in high school and college. But um, bareback just kind of seemed to be the one that was my strong suit. And it's something one I always wanted to do. And um, yeah, it started paying my bills. So worked at it, had a few ups and downs, but that was my, that was my calling, I guess, so. Who was your childhood hero? You know, my dad helped me a lot through rodeo. Um, when I started riding bareback horses, I always looked up to guys like Davy Shields Jr. Uh, he's from Hannah originally and uh, Billy Boyd from Olds. Um, they were both three-time Canadian champs, multiple NFR qualifications, and they both had, they had different styles, but similar styles, and I wanted to take and make my own style from them too. And was fortunate enough, Bill kind of took me under my or his wing when I started, and uh, just got me going in the right direction. Great coach, great, uh, great guy to have, I guess, advising you and stuff. So I was, I was quite fortunate. What advice do you give to young cowboys and cowgirls? Um, you know, if you see yourself being a champion or, or in whatever aspect, whatever you want to be, just make sure you work hard at it and go get it. Um, you know, your dreams will never give up on you. You'll give up on your dreams. So if, if I were to give a small piece of advice, that would be it. You know, work hard at it, go after it. And there's going to be sacrifices along the way, but, um, you know, in the end, it'll work out. So, don't give up on it. What is your favorite bronc? Why? Um, it's a gray horse called Mucho Dinero. Come from Eastern Saskatchewan, owned by Wayne Vold now. Um, been on a couple times. Won the short round at Strathmore on him a couple years ago. Like I was 90 on him, and then uh, won a round at the Canadian Finals. I guess it'd be that same year, 2014. Uh, I think it was 88 on him or something. So a uh, phenomenal horse, really fun to ride. He's big, gray, he's really hard, kind of snort and blow. He's kind of spooky, but he's a, he's a money maker. When you got him beside your name, you know you can win a good check, so. Yeah, he's so phenomenal and he, and he really helps you to look good too. He's a, he's a real electric and showy horse and uh, and very rider friendly, I guess I'd say. Like, so. Um, what is your least favorite bronc? Well, I've had a few over the years, but uh, um, ones that are hard to win on, I guess. Ones that you're not really wanting to get on. Um, there's a horse called Must Have. Uh, he actually won Bareback Horse of the Year this year in the CPRA. He's bucked me off twice, and it's it's. Uh, I think that's the only horse that's ever bucked me off twice in a row. And he's done it recently these last couple of years. So uh, I'm not saying he's my least favorite, but he's one that I owe owe one to. So. Uh, what is your favorite hobby off the rodeo circuit? Um, hunting, for sure. Do a lot of hunting, um, spring and fall. Um, my brother's a guide and, and we get into it quite a bit. So uh, that is definitely my most favorite hobby and probably my only hobby outside of rodeo. So. Um, what home cooked meal do you miss the most? You know, I miss my uh, home cooked buffalo steaks. That's in uh, tenderloins, that's my favorite. Um, 
and just to, just having a home cooked meal, I guess, just in general, is is something you definitely miss. It you get tired of eating at restaurants and stuff after a while, and yeah, just just getting home, getting any home cooked meal is is uh, um, is definitely hard to come by, and it's it's something you do miss. It's definitely when you're on the road for a while. Um, what is your favorite song? I listen to about everything. Um, a lot of oldies. Um, some new country. I prefer old country over the new. Um, a lot of rock, though, even even metal. I'll listen to pop, kind of whatever suits my mood, I guess, at the moment. Um, but one of my favorite songs is uh, Can't You See by Waylon Jennings. What got you back on a horse after your first wreck? Um, first serious injury I got, I guess I was steer riding. I think I would have been nine. I got stepped on and severed my liver at a school in Balzac and uh, that was des definitely a test, a couple weeks in the hospital and kind of wasted my summer away having to just be calm for a nine year old kid, couldn't do too much so uh, for a few months but um, yeah you know I, I, I healed up and come around the next spring I was 10 and still wanted to do it so I um, and I've had lots of ups and downs since then but that's uh, you know Chicks dig scars, and <laughs> you could go with that. So. What is your best dating advice as a married cowboy? Oh, I guess uh, just make sure you're ready. You've, uh, you're gonna meet a lot of people, see a lot of different places. You know, everyone lives their own life. Um, just make sure you're really happy with who you're with, I guess, and. Uh, and make sure they can handle you being a cowboy and being gone in the lifestyle you will live. So uh, I guess that's probably the most important thing. Make sure they can handle it. Um, are you an early bird or a night owl? I guess all depends on the season. Um, you kind of get rodeo and you drive late nights so you're kind of a night owl, I guess you turn into. But uh, you get home and you get get settled in and some time off definitely in early birds what is your favorite workout to prepare for rodeo um, I've pretty much done everything honestly um, um, to prepare I kind of throw myself at a few things um, CrossFit type I guess exercises uh, we box um, yoga I'll throw it all in there and uh, and it's usually in short time periods is the thing. I don't get three, four months of solid working out. Usually I'll get six weeks, seven weeks. So I try to do as much as I can in a small period of time um, to get myself back in shape or, or to keep in shape. And throughout the summer, just light stuff whenever I can when you're not sore. Um, I got some bands I pack in my in my truck and stuff. And, uh, um, and when we're in hotels in the wintertime, especially staying in the States, uh, we'll probably hit the gym up every day. But... Um, Right now in my downtime, that's box CrossFit and yoga is what I do. What is the stigma about cowboys that hurts you? Being on time. Lots of guys have a hard time being on time. And I'm a person that's very scheduled and like to be, I like to know where I'm going, when I'm leaving, what I'm doing. And uh, traveled a few guys over the years that don't really seem to care about that. So <laughs> that's probably one of my pet peeves, I guess. Um, if you couldn't be a bareback rider, what would you be? You know, I'd have to, if I couldn't rodeo, I guess, um, something extreme is, and you know, I don't hardly ride them at all, uh, but dirt bikes, you know, I love watching dirt bikes, skidoos, anything, anything to do with an extreme sport, you know, even maybe UFC, who knows, not a fighter, but that's, uh, that would be something that definitely probably I could see myself getting into if I didn't rodeo. Um, what is the best post rodeo party you've been to? Post rodeo party. There's been quite a few. Um, usually all the big ones, you know, the Calgary Stampede, Las Vegas, the NFR. That's probably the best one. Um, lots of people, just phenomenal things. Um, um, there's lots of good cabarets over the years. Don't go to them as much anymore. <laughs> Getting older, but. Uh, when we were kids, yeah, um, Cloverdale's got a great one. There's, uh, yeah, there's quite a few, I guess.
What do you think of first when you think about the CFR? Excitement, I guess. Um, I'm always like right now, I'm kind of on a high right now. I can't wait to get to the CFR. Um, it's only a few days away, so definitely looking forward to it. Just good crowds, good atmosphere, good horses, good money. It's, uh, it's what, when January 1st kicks around, that's what you're looking forward to again is, is November. So um, I guess I could say I've been thinking about it all year and I think about it every year, every new year. But um, yeah, just I just get excited. Like I said, I can't wait. I wish it was tomorrow.